G'day and uh, welcome to another video with Better Picks. Hope this finds everyone well. Today I wanted to create a video around stitching some images into a panorama that I photographed in Rome uh, last year. Uh, these images were shot at uh, St. Peter's in, uh, in the main part and very well known of uh, Rome. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, have a look at that process. The reason that I'm using Lightroom for stitching is it allows me to stitch the uh, digital negative or raw files into a new digital negative, uh, which is really handy for editing because then uh, you can make specific adjustments and localized adjustments to the DNG as opposed to having to work in JPEG or TIFF, uh, which is still a good option, but a little bit more limiting than working with a raw file. So you can see on screen here, I've got the uh, five images that were photographed at night of St. Peter's. Uh, the images were shot on a uh, tripod. You can see the settings over there on the right hand side, ISO 200, 25.4 millimeters, F8 at 15 seconds. So a little bit um, longer exposure, but obviously at night time, uh, that's what's necessary. So normally uh, my process traditionally for creating panoramas with Photoshop would be to edit the photos in Adobe Camera Raw, save them as TIFFs, and then open those TIFFs in Photoshop and stitch them uh, there. But now with uh, Lightroom, I've changed over my editing and process, and I'm creating those panoramas in Lightroom and then editing uh, that uh, stitch panorama, which is becomes a DNG. Um, and uh, yeah, obviously taking all of the advantages and flexibility of RAW. All right, let's go to the develop module and let's select those five images, which you can see they are already selected. And I'm gonna go up to photo, photo merge and panorama. You can see the, the shortcut is control M if you wanna work a little bit quickly. That immediately opens up the photo, uh, sorry, panorama merge preview. And you can see that it's stitching away there and it's done very quickly, which is great. So uh, straight out of the, uh, the box, just as it is, uh, that panorama looks pretty good. Um, uh, let's just switch off auto crop to see what it's doing there. I'd just like to show you exactly what the software does. Um, you can see that those images have been warped a little bit so that they do stitch together a little bit more seamlessly, which is a fairly normal part of the process. The wider the angle lens that you use, the more the warping has to happen. Um, so, or the more warping that needs to be applied for the images to successfully stitch together. Keeping in mind that um, the more warping that happens, it can reduce sharpness and detail uh, in the photograph. So that's a bit of a consideration. Generally speaking, I like to stitch uh, with around 35 millimeters or longer on a traditional full frame uh, camera format. And obviously uh, with this camera, it was shot at around 25 mil, but it's a crop sensor. So it's equivalent to a little bit more than uh, 35 mil. So, so that's why uh, it has allowed me to get such a good stitch with minimal uh, distortion applied. Now with the boundary warp, I'm gonna leave auto crop unchecked for the time being. With boundary warp, if I just slide that along a little bit, you can see what it's doing is actually further stretching the image to fill the frame, uh, to fill in those white points. If I go all the way, it actually fills it all together. Um, and what that does is just makes a slightly bigger image. Now, I actually like the look of that because you can see that there is, based on the tripod's position, I wasn't using a tilt shift lens to correct for vertical uh, line distortion. Um, it's actually correcting the vertical lines as we go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually push it a little bit further more than what I would normally do and go up around 90. And you can see that those vertical lines are much closer to being vertical, which is great. Um, so yeah, and that wasn't too much um, distortion there. So, so I think that's okay. Let's have a look very quickly at the panorama options up the top there. There's, you can see it's defaulted to cylindrical. Uh, let's have a look at what spherical does. Not much different, but we lose a little bit of top and bottom. And perspective doesn't seem to work. I'm not sure why that is, but um, let's go back to cylindrical because I think that gave us the best results. All right, very happy with that. Let's click on merge. 
and you can see up on the top left hand side there there's a status bar just indicating that that uh, process of creating the panorama is happening and relatively quickly these are five full resolution raw files I do try to where I can um, stitch vertically because it just you end up with a, a higher resolution image however in this case I was actually using a video head so I couldn't place my camera vertically uh, I had to unfortunately only go horizontal but still because it's a really high resolution image and certainly plenty to play with uh, if it comes time for printing with this image. Now, remember I haven't actually made any adjustments to the actual image as yet. I'm, I'm only going through the um, stitching process, which looks like that has completed. But uh, And that's on purpose because I do want to make those color adjustments once the image has actually stitched together. Now let's have a look at that beautiful detail. Fantastic. Plenty of detail there. You can see the advantages of stitching images. Not only can you get different shaped images, but you get some incredible detail. This is obviously we're viewing this at 100% at the moment. Fantastic. All right. Now, a few little blown out highlights there, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the exposure. My biggest concern at night time is not crushing the blacks which I haven't done you can see as I said there's no adjustments that have been made and there's definitely detail in the shadows there if we look at the sky it looks pretty clean which is great so and certainly at ISO 200 we're not we're not pushing the camera at all in fact that's the lowest ISO this camera will shoot at in uh, raw so we are definitely uh, finding we have a very clean image all right, let's have a look at some edits for this image. So the first thing I want to do is have a look at white balance. So I'm just going to have a look at correcting that color just a little bit. Now, the lights at nighttime at St. Peter's are very, very uh, warm. So it's up to you whether you want to go for a completely neutral look, which you can see there, or if you do want to retain some of that warmth. For me, I just want to have a little bit of that warmth in there. Keeping in mind that our eyes perspective on color temperature is very different to how a camera uh, reproduces. All right, I'm just gonna increase the contrast just a little bit, exposure just a little bit, but I'm gonna drop the highlights because I want to look at trying to retain as many of those highlights as possible. And you can see there is a big difference there. That's really made a, a great improvement. Um, now, if I zoom in and focus on that, you could argue that, okay, well, those highlights are still blown out, which they are. But if you look at the image overall, I would say that that looks pretty much on par. I don't know that I would actually push those highlight recovery um, too much further because I don't want to end up with, um, I guess, an unnatural looking image. If we were in this situation, you know, that would be roughly, I would think, what our eyes would perceive. They're very bright lights on a dark evening. Um, so overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how um, that exposure contrast and highlight recovery has gone. I'm just going to push the shadows a tiny bit, not a great deal, just to give us a little bit more in the shadow areas. As I said, the shadow areas or the dark areas, at least like the sky, for example, are, are really quite clean. So I don't want to mess with them too much. All right, I'm going to come down to detail. And we've got the preview there, which is great. Yep, there's some writing, which is, uh, and some sharp edges, which is a good way to, to kind of, I guess, get an idea of how the sharpening's going. I'm also going to come into one as to one, which is also 100%. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of sharpening. You can see that's definitely brought up the detail there. But I'm definitely going to apply some masking because there's areas in this image that I don't want the sharpening applied to. For example, the sky because that's just going to make it look like it has more noise than what it actually does. All right, yep, that looks great. Noise reduction, I'm pretty happy with where it is. Um, yep, that's all good. The only thing I'm going to do is come up to clarity and dehaze. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of clarity, a little bit of dehaze in there. And I'm going to add some vibrance and saturation. 
As I've mentioned in uh, past videos, this particular camera I have set to a fairly flat color profile and I want to make sure that the color intensity is reflective of what I'm trying to achieve. All right, now that I've increased that vibrance and saturation, I'm going to revisit my white balance. Take a tiny bit of that warmth out, but as I mentioned earlier, just leave a little bit in there. I'm gonna go for a little bit more of a neutral look. Just adjust the tint there as well. There's quite a bit of cyan in there, so which is why I'm adding plus 34 magenta. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, with where that is at at the moment, I'm really happy. Now, as you would have noticed, so far I'm only making global adjustments, which is totally fine. That's what I'm going for thus far. Um, the only thing that I might consider is the outer edges on each side of this panorama, for me, are a little bit distracting. And there's two ways that I could deal with that. I could either selectively darken the outer edges just to bring the focus away, or I could actually crop So if I just bring that crop in on either end and have the distance for the edge of the main structure roughly the same, then it's going to feel balanced. Let's have a look. Yep, that looks pretty good. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. The only thing I'm going to do now is make a little bit of a selective adjustment. I'm just finding, I love the texture of the cobbled uh, stones and the road in the foreground, but I just, I just feel like I want to experiment with darkening those down a tiny bit. So I'm just going to go to negative and I'm pretty happy with that brush size and I'm just going to darken ever so slightly that section down the front and maybe even darken that sky ever so slightly just on the edges just on the fringes now the amount that I'm darkening here is not an unnatural amount I'm really just looking at it as a slight reduction in brightness just so that the focus remains on the main structure itself. Now what I'm actually going to look at now as well is I'm just going to leave that there. Pretty happy with that overall. I'm going to go back to our main global adjustments and I'm actually going to reduce the exposure ever so slightly. Now if I was printing this I would actually do some experimentation around how it looks printed up because at the moment it looks good on screen but dark images or any image really generally speaking when printed can look a little bit darker not because they actually are especially obviously if you have your screen calibrated they should be the same but because they're not an illuminated image, so at the moment on a screen, the image is illuminated from behind because it's a screen. Whereas on a print, a print is reflective. So it's reflecting any light that's falling on the print. So the, the way that the image is illuminated fundamentally is different. So for that reason, I would print this to see how it prints up and then I would adjust to suit. Um, that way, uh, we can really make sure that our exposure is looking at uh, all, or is at where we want it to be um, so that that reproduction on print goes okay. So currently I'm pretty happy with that image. Um, again, uh, as with a lot of my image making, I, I don't make big changes to my edits. It really is to try to get the image to where it was uh, when I was there just further playing around with highlights and shadows and everything um, however 
uh, I'm really happy with it. So I don't, I'm, I'm not into, and this isn't a criticism of, of anyone who does, but I'm not into big, big changes to where the image is different to what's experienced in real life. As a color image, I'm really happy with that. The only thing that I'm going to suggest uh, or look at now is maybe experiment with what it would look like as a black and white. And I think it could really work. It looks kind of interesting, doesn't it? The only thing I maybe would do as a black and white is drop the exposure a little bit, but overall, I like it. For now though, I'm going to keep it as a color. It's certainly an image that I am um, uh, really glad that I captured. Uh, obviously, Italy is a very different place at the moment with the uh, lockdowns, as is the rest of the world. So the appreciation levels I'm feeling right now for having been to these places is uh, pretty high, as I'm sure everyone is. Hopefully things will get better soon and we'll be able to revisit some of these amazing locations that we, uh, we know exist and I'm sure would look forward to seeing. All right, so as I mentioned, no major edits on that one. Fundamentally just stitching and then color and contrast, highlight, shadow adjustments and exposure adjustments. This is the beauty of um, working to achieve your images um, as close to correct in camera. It reduces your editing time and allows you to uh, to have better results. Hope this video has been helpful and thanks for stopping by. And uh, as always, any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.